Hello, this is Daniel Ritchie again, and I'm going to be talking about Lightwave uh, and Howler today. Uh, today I would like to talk about creating instances of geometry or instances of foliage that settles into the um, these eroded areas like you're seeing in this photograph that I just shot uh, a few minutes ago. <laughs> uh, and this should illustrate the idea pretty well. As you see in these eroded areas, there's these uh, little streaks of uh, these little uh, bushes or these little bits of uh, tumbleweed or whatever this stuff is that have settled into these uh, these crevices. Uh, I suppose there's more water down in there possibly or something. Not sure uh, exactly what causes that, but we're going to try and go ahead and uh, duplicate that in Lightwave today. We're going to start by working in Howler using a new feature of Howler 9.5 which should be available presently almost uh, within a few days so I'm gonna start with a, um, a smaller image today I'm not gonna work with the default resolution because uh, when we export our model it's gonna be basically uh, one pixel e equals one meter and that can be a very large uh, landscape um, I've done some uh, testing recently of uh, using a landscape that large and I'll just show you a few examples uh, that we uh, populated with instances of geometry of uh, foliage inside of Lightwave um, I was aiming for about half a million instances never quite got there but we got quite a lot in there and this is um, a very large landscape that you can uh, you can explore And uh, I took somewhere in the order of 50 different uh, <laughs> images or renders off of this, and all of them fairly different. Some of these are duplicates, but you get the idea that uh, Lightwave is a very capable uh, program, rendering program, especially good at uh, apparently rendering instances. Very, um, bear in mind I'm working on a machine with uh, just, you know, it's a bare minimal laptop, 4 gigs of memory and um, 2 gigahertz processor. 4 core, however, is an AMD uh, 5200. Nice machine. Uh, I think the newer one's a little more uh, power efficient, but a nice machine, but it's not exactly what we'd call high end. Uh, but we were able to get some incredible um, renders out of it. So I'm going to demonstrate how we how we created the geometry for some of these, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, start a project. Let's see. I'm going to use a smaller image, say 400 by 400 today should do it, because it did actually take quite a while to lay out all of those instances on a large piece of geometry. Um, the actual rendering of them was very quick. I'm going to start by creating some plasma noise or something to that effect or I might do the old river canyon trick where we use a gradient let's see I'll use a gradient and I'm just going to use the linear the grayscale one um, I'm going to create a gradient on my screen and I'm going to render some plasma noise over that using the uh, difference mode and you'll see that we'll get a uh, sort of a nice river canyon right at the uh, the median level of that gradient and that's just using uh, one of the combined modes the difference mode alright so now that we have our geometry I'm gonna go ahead and go into the uh, 3d designer bear in mind we have these tools also available as filters if you like to work that way under the stylize menu there's um, the uh, slope shading, erosion, and uh, some other filters there that will help with landscapes. Erosion uh, will create an erosion map that you can export into Lightwave or any other program. But I'm going to go ahead and do it directly in 3D Designer because we get a visual uh, 3D object that we can look at and see uh, and tweak a little more. And then we can export our, uh, our erosion map out from there. So 3D Designer is under the Transform menu. Uh, it's just basically a, a software rasterizer. It uses the GPU, GPU for certain things and CPU for certain things. 
Uh, we've got ray tracing. Uh, as far as shadows go, we've got some ambient occlusion and other things that will help us um, get our job done. But we're just going to concern ourselves with the erosion for now. Uh, and then we'll export an OBJ file to Lightwave. So erosion is in the uh, More tab. You click on the upper corner there. And I'm just going to slide it over. As you can see, we get a quick, we get a fast preview. It's not the full resolution, but then once we let go of the mouse there, uh, it pops into the full resolution. And I'm just going to, uh, let's see, I might add some sediment to that. Might change the... Let's see, I do want some of that erosion map to show through so I'm going to lower the amount of sediment a bit so that um, the erosion is showing there and um, using the ambient occlusion will help you see that a little bit better it gets a little bit darker so you might want to bump your lighting up a bit but uh, it will help you see the erosion a little bit better especially under certain lighting conditions let's see such as that you can always adjust your uh, various uh, angles and things so I want to make sure I'm getting enough of that so I think I think I think what we have will do for the example um, I'm not going to use that high in altitude I think there's enough erosion in this Anyways, once we've done that, we can actually export these uh, these maps that we're using. There's a whole bunch of them. We can export, for example, the uh, the geometry itself as an image map. Um, the masks. Say we created a a color map for this, um, a gradient using the slope and uh, and the uh, also the altitude, and we created a, you know snow and rock and all that stuff in there. We could export that. We could also export the lighting, just like the lighting you see in here, only as a 2D map. Um, that can be exported. And also the Z buffer and some other things. But we're going to use, oh, also the texture. Um, you can have a texture map on this as well. That can be exported. Um, but we're just going to concern ourselves with the, uh, the erosion map, which should be right there. It stores a copy of it. And we'll keep that for later. We'll save that out later. And I'm going to save this as an object file. It gives us a little bit of a warning to save this as a, another format once we've uh, done everything we want to do. Because OBJ files are text files and they can be kind of slow to load. So you want to ex um, save it as, say, a lightwave object. I'm going to save this uh, in my documents. Oops. Downloads. Documents. I'll just call it uh, something. Sorry for all the noise. <laughs> it's saving the OBJ file. Now I'm going to cancel out of here and I'm going to save a copy of the uh, this erosion map. I'm going to keep it uh, white on black because we're going to be using that as a, uh, a white map for the um, this uh, geometry of this foliage that we're going to load in later or create instances of let's see I'll save that and I'll just call it target file I think I'll just use a JPEG it'll be fine now I'm gonna go into Lightwave oops wrong button let's see there we go I'm gonna load the OBJ file probably take a few moments. Let's say it is a, it's a text file. Let's see, I'll go into the uh, perspective mode. It's a little easier for me to work with. But as you see, that's just uh, 
same object we had in 3D Designer in, in Howler. We might want to give it uh, some texturing, or at least turn on smoothing. Yeah, let's see, right there. You can always add some texturing to it. Now, I'm going to load in that, uh, just to show it, let's see. Surface Editor. Maybe I'll go ahead and make it like a diffusion mask just to show it. Um, I'm going to use a planer on the Y and select the uh, image I want. Should be under, let's see, Documents. And I'm going to auto size and use that. All right, if I went into uh, VPR mode, you could see probably that that is indeed working. Let me invert it. Let's see. Well, not sure what's going on there. Hmm, not entirely sure what's going on there. Oh, here it is. Um, that is one thing to watch out for when this uh, object gets exported. It uh, has a, uh, for some reason, it has a glossiness or rather a um, specularity value which is uh, zero. Let's see. Or the, the glossiness rather is zero. And that will make your surface, no matter what, look like it's uh, just white. You can tell by looking at the preview, there's a hard edge there. Uh, so I'm just going to bump the glossiness up, and, and lo and behold, suddenly our texture looks like what it's supposed to look like. All right, that confused me for about five seconds. All right, so um, there we go. So as you see, we have that as a diffusion mask, and, the, and you see these dark areas are the areas where we have our... Um, uh, what do you call that, or erosion. So I'm going to use that, instead of a diffusion mask, I'll get rid of that. I'm going to use that as a, uh, change this color too so we can see it better. I'm going to use that as a uh, instance uh, weight map. So let me load in some, mm, I have a, a bit of foliage somewhere. Load in under, I believe it was under trees. I have something somewhere, I'm sure. I'll just load in this weed object. And I'm going to use that as our instance. Alright, I'm going to select the object, the geometry of the, uh, the landscape. I'm going to hit Shift O and P for properties. Shift O was to make sure we're, we're in objects, even though I already selected that as kind of a habit. Um, I'm going to go to the instance generator, select, whoops, hit that by mistake twice. <laughs> hit uh, too many years as a programmer, I guess. Let's see, instance generator. I'm going to double click on that and add object. That will be the weed object that I loaded. Sort of a, well, the leaf texture is the texture of uh, one of our local sunflowers. It's not really the geometry of a sunflower, though, so I just called it a weed. And let's see, make sure that's selected. Select surface as the type. Uh, might start with 100 instances just so we can see. Whoops, 100 instances just so we can see something. And um, we might want to, uh, let's see, change the scale or something. It might be too small to see. See what happens. There we go. Change it up to 5,000 just to see the see that we do indeed have instances all over our object. Now what we're going to do is constrain these to our uh, these areas where the erosion is. So I'm going to make that a weight map. Let me do the same thing I did before when I made it a uh, diffusion map. It was use planer on the Y. Load the uh, that image. Actually we already have it loaded so it should be the erosion mask. Uh, I'm going to keep it that white and black instead of inverting it. Um, I don't think you probably need pixel blending or mint mapping for this since we're 
uh, just using it as a weight map. I don't know if it'll speed anything up, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, make sure you hit auto sizing so that map fits the entire uh, landscape. And I'm going to close that. Now, uh, when you use a weight map, that means it's a, a probability that an instance will be created if it's if the area in the white weight map is uh, if it's white it'll have a higher probability of being created and if it's black it'll have probably a zero probability of created that means that if we have a instance is set to 100 it doesn't mean we'll get 100 instances it'll it mean it'll have a hundred chances of being created <laughs> so we'll probably have to set this to a much higher value in order to fill fill in these spaces. So I'm going to set it to maybe 10,000 to see what happens. That might take a while. Um, that is one of the slower aspects of the pro of the uh, uh, instances. It takes a while to actually generate the instances. But as you see there, we just created a bunch of instances. Um, I might change the uh, the um, scale here. Say 1,000 to 3,000. Oops. Just click something. Let's see, 1,000. And these are a lot bigger than they would be in a regular landscape, but I'm going to make them large so that we can see them. And of course, we'd also want to put some rotation on there, so I'll just put 360 on the uh, the heading. Should be good enough to make this random enough for what we're doing. And now that you see that all this is working, I'm just going to go ahead and give it a much larger value. It will actually um, show you how many instances were created, in this case, uh, 1,070. So that's actually creating about one-tenth <laughs> of what we specify in this particular instance. So I'm going to put another zero on there. That will probably give us enough. might take quite a while, but once it's done, once it's done... <laughs> It shouldn't uh, shouldn't bother you anymore. Bear in mind, the more instances you create, um, the longer it's going to take to load your scene because these instances are um, recreated every time you load the scene. So just bear in mind, if you create a, a lot of these, you'll have to uh, deal with it later down the line. Um, so maybe sometimes it's better to work with a smaller geometry instead of creating miles of geometry. Just create what you need say if you got one shot just create the uh, the part of the landscape that you need and okay it's done um can't say uh, lightwave is bad at rendering these things it just i mean it is so fast at rendering instances um it's just really the setting them up that takes a while so um as you see we've created a landscape we filled it with instances of uh, of our weed object that settles into the erosion areas um, like I showed you in the photograph at the beginning of the tutorial I uh, hope this has been um, useful hope you uh, check out Howler of course hope you've enjoyed the uh, the tutorials we've been doing on Lightwave for the last few weeks or yeah last few weeks really now and uh, hope to continue making them uh, this is the last day of my 30-day uh, trial. I haven't used Lightwave in quite a while, so I um, haven't updated my license. Um, you know, we don't make a lot of money as, as uh, programmers, of course, so uh, see, we'll just see what happens there. And uh, I've got, uh, let me see, I've got three more tutorials. I recorded one on doing a uh, uh, Lambert shader from scratch in Lightwave and uh, some other ones. So I hope you win. You watch those as well, and uh, hope you uh, hope hope they've been beneficial. So thanks for watching, and talk to you later. Ta ta for now.